you must prepare now. That's what Elon Musk is literally telling you. And this is true. We are on a path to unsustainable debt levels that will lead to either one, a significant crash two a debt crisis or three, all of the above with a reset. And in this video, I really want to talk about this, but I also want to talk about how you can prepare. So welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber. Let's take a quick look at this warning going all the way back to May from Elon Musk. And he said that the dollar will be worth nothing if the US doesn't do something about its national debt. Now, the problem with this is that it is already too late. The purchasing, the, the purchasing power of the dollar has dropped so significantly over the last couple decades combined with inflation and also unsustainable practices by the central bankers. The US dollar is practically worthless and it's only going to continue to get worse and worse and worse, especially since debt is not slowing down. Now, also, even over here, more recently from September, we have interest payments on the federal govern government uh, debt increased 30% from last year. And this was breaking interest on U.S. debt tops $1 trillion for the first time. In the first 11 months of the fiscal year, interest payments totaled $1.05 trillion, up 30% from a year ago, the Treasury Department reported. Remember that government overspending is the real cause of inflation. Now, also on top of this, right, there was a recent video, and this is Elon Musk regarding this, right? He said, we are currently spending at a rate that is bankrupting the country. The interest payments on U.S. debt this year exceeded the entire Defense Department spending. If this continues, all of the federal government uh, taxes will be simply paying the interest. Check this out. Tell you like what are the things that I think are important? Um, you know, I think we want a secure border. We don't have a secure border. Um, we want safe and clean cities. Uh, I think we want to re reduce the amount of spending that we're at least slow down the the spending. Um, and uh, because we're we're currently spending at a rate that is bankrupting the country, the interest payments on U.S. debt this year exceeded. The entire Defense Department spending. If this continues, all of the federal government taxes will simply be paying the interest, and then and you you keep go, going down that road, and you you end up, you know, in the tragic situation that Argentina had back in the day. Argentina used to be one of the most prosperous places in the world, and hopefully, with Malay taking over, he can restore that. But um, it's it was an incredible fall from grace for Argentina to go from being one of the most prosperous places in the world to um, being very far from that. So I think we should not take American prosperity for granted. Um, so we, we really want to, I think, we, we've got to reduce the size of government, we've got to reduce the spending, and we've got to live within our means. And the issue with this, though, is this is not going to happen. It won't happen because they have zero plan in motion to slow down the U.S. debt. They want debt to continue and continue and continue. We already know this. Janet Yellen already told us $50 trillion by 2030. This is leading us down a path to collapse. It is going to collapse. And there's no way around this. They want this to actually happen. They want to bankrupt the U.S., which in return also bankrupts the world because they want the traditional financial system to collapse. They want to push a digital financial system. And even over here we have, and this is a more updated view. Again, let's just go back. This was September. This is October. The U.S. deficit tops $1.8 trillion in 2024, up more than 8% from the previous year and the third highest on record. The interest expense for the year totaled $1.16 trillion. Just for example, it was 1.05 trillion. The first time that figure has surpassed a trillion dollar level. This is not sustainable. Each American will pay almost $3,600 in interest payments this year alone on our national debt. This is where things get very concerning.
because they're not just making sure that you stay poor by, you know, the, the cost of goods and services around you through inflation and also for, you know, the, the demise essentially of the purchasing power of the dollar as well, because again, by their own actions, but they also want you to pay on these interest payments. Right now, you are silently being bankrupted by these players, these elites that are causing these issues because they are pushing an elite agenda. They don't want you getting rich. They want you to be reliant on the system, the same system that they are now trying to reset into a digital-based system. This is not Apple, Tesla, or even NVIDIA. This is interest payments on the U.S. national debt of $36 trillion. We now pay nearly $1.2 trillion per year in interest on the debt. About 23% of all taxes, tariffs, and fees collected by the U.S. government goes to paying interest on the debt. And look at that last massive spike. Guys, that is from 2020 to now. There is no way that we can look at this chart and say, things are fine. Something is going to break. Something is going to break in a very significant way. Elon Musk actually quoted this and said, if there is not radical reduction of government expenditures, then just like an individual who has taken on too much debt, America will become de facto bankrupt. The interest on the debt is trending to rapidly absorb all tax revenue, leaving nothing for critical needs. And at that point, the question that we all ask is what happens next? Cities will collapse. And this will lead to the collapse of America. But it's not just going to be the US. It is going to be a global collapse. And then what we see is a complete wipeout of the old system so we can usher in the digital programmable financial system based on CBDCs and stable coins. Here we have another updated view. The US national debt has increased by 473 billion over the last three weeks. Three weeks. It now stands at 35.8 trillion. We already know that this has uh, surpassed over $36 trillion. That's $103,700 of debt for every American. This is unsustainable. America is in the fast lane to bankruptcy. This is a crisis. Elon Musk is literally claiming that this is a crisis because it is. Anyone that is sitting here and saying this is fine needs to reevaluate what this means. We literally need to find a buyer for all this U.S. debt. Who is buying U.S. debt right now? We know that the largest holder of U.S. debt is Japan. And guess what? Over the last couple months, Japan has been hitting a brick wall. And guess who's been there to bail them out? The U.S. It's a revolving cycle of unsustainable fiscal policy that's going to lead to the inevitable, which is a collapse. We are already in a debt crisis. There's not, oh, what's next is a debt crisis. No, we already are in it. And we have been in it since going all the way back to 2020. Now, also, Elon Musk warned us back in March of 2023. This was after we started to see banks collapse. Commercial real estate debt is by far the most serious looming issue. Yes, because commercial real estate continues to slow at the same exact time that banks, banks right now, banks in the U.S. are seeing unrealized losses that are seven times higher than during the 08 financial crisis. This is due to commercial real estate slowing and a large portion of those loans are also tied to this. This is a problem, and it's also the same reason why 
I keep putting a spotlight on all of the reports regarding hundreds of, you know, banks being at risk because of commercial real estate loans. And also, the FDIC now is sounding the alarm as well. They're warning that 66 banks face the possibility of insolvency after being added to its problem list. This continues to, it's all spiraling right now. And the bank collapses that happened back in 2023, that was just the, the small portion of the, the problem. This is a much bigger issue. And gold and silver, right? We focus on gold and silver a lot, but also we are now starting to see the transition happening in real time from the BRICS. Putin says Russia will allow BRICS partners to use digital currencies and investments and that BRICS will continue to work on a swift alternative. I have been documenting this for years, a key component in what he said. We can create such an instrument that will be practically non-inflationary. Digital currencies are being tapped in because they do have a limited supply. We are moving away from inflationary mechanisms around finance. And ever since around roughly 08 to 2010, the BRICS have been moving heavily against the US and innovating to move away from the US. Sanctions only accelerated this more and more. Now, also focus on the BRICS because they have been the largest buyers of gold and silver. And I always keep pushing for everyone to prepare accordingly. I said back in March of 2023, I would personally be stockpiling physical gold and silver, food and water, and guns and ammo. And a lot of people think that this is crazy, but you got to remember that when we start to see significant crises and collapses and people have nothing to cling on to, where do they go and look? They look at their neighbor's houses. All of a sudden, we have crime spiraling out of control. Robberies. These things happen. When we look at what's going on in the US, it's not just about, oh, let me buy crypto and prepare with crypto. No, you also need to look at necessities and ways to protect yourself and your household. This is not, you know, some sort of fear-mongering tactic or anything like that. No, this is happening right now. Regardless of if you want to believe it or not, it's okay. The charts are there. You can look at the charts. They are proof of what's coming. And even today, a more updated view, this is a year and a, a few months later, right? Gold and silver trading as if we are about to witness one of the largest financial crises in history. Quite the foreshadowing if you have been following the financial data coming out. I really don't see how we avoid a financial crisis in 2025, 2026. This is my thought process. This is exactly what I said on the 18th. I have been stockpiling physical gold and silver because of what we are seeing. The best way to prepare accordingly is by stocking up on necessities, stocking up on things that can help you protect your household and also Protect your financial well-being, gold and silver. I always say keep cash reserves, sir, 10%, 15%. It's up to you. But now is the time that you want to really kind of lock in and prepare. Because things are about to get way worse because of the unsustainable path that we are going down. And no, whoever gets in, after this election is not going to be able to save us. It's far, it, it, it's way, way too far gone. But we can start to change things that could ultimately lead us down a path to a much more sustainable financial fiscal policy. But the issue is four years is not going to cut it because this has been an ongoing problem for well over a decade. Four years is not going to do much. And also the agenda here is not, they, they don't want to fix these problems. They want these problems to continue to spiral so that they can, they, they can lead us down a path to a collapse and then a reset into a digital financial system.
So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.